Why Carrie Mullis is cooler than your man. Welcome to Truth Dune Official. In this video, you learn about the marvelous misadventures of Nobel Prize laureate Kerry Mullers. You'll want to stick around till the end of this video to learn how to avoid being the black sheep in a court of law. But first, I am your host, Misinformation. If you like this channel, make sure to subscribe to receive more great biographical content, misinformation analysis, and other sentiments and ramblings that please and amuse us. And become a truth doula, because only you can slay misinformation at its source. Get our app on truthduel.com. Let's start this video with a thought experiment. Truth Duelers, if you became famous overnight, what would you do with your newfound platform? Would you advocate for bigwig politicians sitting on their fat stacks of oil cash to do something about the climate like Greta Thunberg? Would you tell the millions of working class Americans that they need to work harder to achieve the same wealth you made from an infamous raunchy tape like Kim Kardashian? I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to surround yeah. yourself with people that want to work. Boring Botox lady. None of this is enough to please and amuse us. Perhaps we should end the video here. Wait, this just in! Our Truth Duel investigative reporters have peered beyond the grave and found us a Nobel Prize laureate who loved LSD and used his sudden fame to rant about Anthony Fauci and AIDS. Who is this infamous man of mystery? Born as Carrie Banks Mullis on December 28, 1944 in North Carolina, Mullis showed an aptitude for science at a young age. This interest led him to building rockets in his backyard when he was just 13 years old. So the next time your kid struggles with building a paper mache volcano for the school science fair, remind them that at least it isn't rocket science. After graduating high school, Mullis acquired a bachelor's in chemistry and further pursued a PhD in biochemistry. As a modern-day renaissance man, he also managed a bakery for two years, pursued a career as a fiction author, and did his postdoctoral research fellowship in pediatric cardiology. Wait, let's hold our horses, or our rockets in this case. A lot of weird stuff sure to please and amuse you happened during Mullis's college years. For starters, Mullis didn't know the first thing about biochemistry. His colleague, Tom White, said that during Mullis's oral exams, he, quote, didn't get his propositions right, he didn't know general biochemistry, end quote. Later, a dissertation committee rejected his thesis. Mullis went to his friend and asked them to edit his paper. And White said that the friends did their best to, quote, cut all the wacko stuff out of it, end quote. With some heavy lifting on the part of Mullis's advisor, the committee eventually accepted the thesis. But where did that wacko stuff come from? LSD, of course. Mullis did copious amounts of the psychoactive drug, and he believed it allowed him to understand astrophysics. He was so confident in his abilities that at the age of 20, he submitted an article to Nature magazine that he said described, quote, the entire universe from beginning to end. End quote. And the kicker is that Nature published it. It just goes to show you miss 100% of the acid tabs you don't take. In fact, Mullis was such a psychonaut that he even refined his own LSD. It was his homemade chemistry that landed him a job. White eventually hired Mullis to join the Cetus Corporation, a biotechnology company. White pitched Mullis as an incredible synthetic chemist, saying, quote, he was a good chemist because he'd been synthesizing hallucinogenic drugs at Berkeley. 
End quote. Anything can be put on a resume these days. However, there were plenty of times where White began to question his hiring decision. Mullis had a habit of fighting co-workers at company parties. One time, he even threatened to bring a gun to settle the argument. And it didn't help that a portion of those arguments were lovers' quarrels, because Mullis had plenty of office romances. He made his way through four different wives and plenty of extramarital affairs. But it all paid off when Mullis discovered the idea that would lead him to Nobel fame. The polymerase chain reaction. Nowadays, PCR tests are used for COVID-19 testing in part due to their fast turnaround time. Prior to Mullis's invention, tests like these could take weeks, but Mullis managed to shorten it to a couple of hours. How did he do this? Mullis claims the idea came to him while he was driving home from the lab and had time to clear his mind. He was thinking about a problem the microbiology lab was encountering with their tests. The lab had a hard time spotting the DNA they were looking for in samples. Mullis compared it to looking for a specific license plate while driving down the interstate in the moonlight. Mullis realized that using polymerase, the P in polymerase chain reaction, would allow him to make copies of that specific DNA strand. By multiplying the strand, you can create a traffic jam of cars, all with the same license plate, something much easier for scientists to spot. Mullis's idea revolutionized DNA testing. Testing. But you were out driving. I mean, well, I mean, I you, driving, you, you no, just had, you had this in your head, and you were thinking about it constantly, and then you just realized that there was you, a way. The, you don't think in the lab as, <laughs> as much, you know. Yeah. I usually think. Uh, I was spending my weekends up in Mendocino at a little cabin, and I would drive up every Friday night and come back on Sunday night, and that's really that was a nice. It was about two and a half hours, and it's sort of your. You're just, you've got something to do with your hands, <laughs> and you can't do anything else until you think. And that's, that's when I did most of my thinking, mm. actually, because the day-to-day -day life in a laboratory doesn't allow a lot of, you know, there's all these letters in your inbox, and there's your phone ringing, and there's all these people that you have to deal with and stuff, and you don't have really that kind of time. There's a wide variety of areas that utilize Mullis's PCR test. It helps diagnose sickle cell anemia, analyzes ancient bones, assists in crime investigation, maps the human genome, determines paternity, and so much more. That crime investigation part is particularly important because it's time to examine how Mullis took a swan dive into the deep end. Mullis's PCR test was used in none other than O.J. Simpson's trial. O.J.'s defense attorney hired Mullis to disparage the PCR tests the prosecution was presenting. However, the prosecuting attorney told the defense team that bringing Mullis up to bat would bring down the credibility of the entire argument, since Mullis was still dabbling in drugs. So many drugs. The defense team took Mullis off the roster, and they dodged a bullet there. Mullis later said that if he was allowed to testify, that he would have fabricated a story that the deputy district attorney was sexually abusing children. Because according to Mullis, quote, I think LSD would have paled beside fictitious young boys, end quote. Mullis also had strong opinions about another famous person, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Mullis believed that Fauci was misusing his PCR test to do blood samples under an electronic microscope. But Mullis didn't stop with criticizing Fauci. He believed that all of the administrative people running the health department were not fit to describe science. To Mullis, they were policy wonks putting their funding into the wrong experiments. The president of the University of South Carolina even asked Fauci to come down to the university and debate Mullis. Fauci refused to speak there. Mullis's next target was HIV and AIDS. Mullis wasn't entirely sold that a singular retrovirus was responsible for HIV. He 
argued that the scientific community needed to examine if there were multiple retroviruses responsible for HIV and AIDS. This went against the mainstream hypothesis at the time. The scientific community believed that AIDS was caused by a single species of lentivirus, a type of retrovirus. We now know that there are two species that cause AIDS. However, this was a controversial idea at the time. Mullis believed that it was possible that there was a whole genus of retroviruses causing AIDS. He believed this because he observed that symptoms in North America sometimes appear to be different from symptoms in Africa. In an interview, Mullis stated, quote, I've published this, but nobody pays any attention. But I think it's sort of that disease is caused by a genus. We've been around retroviruses for a long time. Why haven't they ever caused any diseases? I'm postulating it's required that you be infected by a whole lot of different strains. End quote. On the surface, this skepticism is healthy for science. However, it's when Mullis tried to present this theory that everything took a nosedive. Attending a conference at the European Society for Clinical Investigation, Mullis prepared a slideshow to present his ideas. To the shock of every scientist attending, the slideshow also contained Mullis's art, which consisted of nude women photographed under multicolored lights. Maybe Mullis was confused and thought STD stood for sexually trashy disaster. If Mullis wanted to discuss sex, then he should have written a sequel to his first novel. Just look at that slick tan cover photo. Sex sells and I want a million copies. Misinformation wishes you well and reminds you that a courtroom is not the time to practice your improv skills. P.S. Is it just a coincidence that Kerry Mullis died just before the coronavirus pandemic? What is it? What what is it about humanity that that that, that wants to go to the, all the details and stuff and listen? You know, these guys like Fauci get up there and start talking. You know, he doesn't know anything really about anything, and I'd say that to his face. Nothing. Until next time, make sure to like our video, subscribe to our channel, and become a truth dueler, or Mullis will launch an LSD-covered rocket at you.